You may have seen bumper stickers that say, save the bees, and wondered from what? Well, a disease called American fowl brood is wiping out honeybee hives across Canada and posing a serious risk to the future of agriculture in our province. To combat this, Health Canada has conditionally approved a vaccine that could help slow, slow the spread. For more on how it's given out and why it's so important is our science and climate specialist, Darius Madavi. Darius, how serious, first of all, is American fowl brood? Well, it's hard to overstate just how dangerous this disease is. Now, American fowl brood is caused by a bacteria infecting the beehive. And there's a few reasons it's so devastating. Now, it's a spore-forming bacteria, meaning it's really easy to transmit and spread, but incredibly difficult to kill. It also affects the bee larvae, meaning the next, the baby bees, the next generation of bees are what's most affected. And since honeybees live in colonies in their beehives, it's really easy for disease to spread among that tight-knit community. They're also very social creatures. They like to visit each other and other hives, and that can spread disease up to 10 kilometers away to other communities. So to get a better idea of just how scary American fowl brood can be, I spoke with Susan Cormier, a writer and beekeeper in Langley. We have had an outbreak of European fowl brood in the area. It will knock back your hives. You've got to work really hard to take care of your hives. You will lose some hives, but there's a chance of survival. However, American fowl brood, until recently, the only treatment has been to euthanize your hives and burn the, all the equipment associated with those infected colonies. Now, it's worth noting that unlike some other bee diseases, this does not affect our native bees, which tend to lead more solitary lives. But fallow brood has also been growing as a threat in recent years. There are just more hives across the province. There's a trend that experts call bee havers versus beekeepers, people with good intentions that want to keep bees and help save them, but they don't do a great job of maintaining them so disease can spread to other hives as well. And antibiotic use for animals is much more tightly controlled than it used to be. So there are very limited options for treating and preventing the disease, which makes news of this vaccine all the more welcome. So not to put too fine a point in it, do the bees have to roll up their sleeves, their stingers to get the vaccine? How is this going to work? Uh, fortunately, no. Uh, can you imagine what a nightmare that would be? Oh. It has been tried, but the injection stressed the queen out too much. So this new vaccine is actually an oral one. And the way it works is very cool. So take a look at this. Uh, you can see that here, the first, the, uh, the worker bee takes in the sugar, the uh, the food that contains the vaccine. From there, the worker goes to visit the queen and feeds the queen royal jelly, which it secretes from a gland in its mouth, so it feeds the queen. The, the, uh, then what the queen gets, the royal jelly, also contains the vaccine. So from there, the queen passes that vaccine into her ovaries, and as she lays eggs, the eggs now contain the vaccine as well. So that means that as those eggs hatch and turn into larvae, those eggs already have the vaccine. They already have developed some immunity to the disease. And so they can greatly decrease the, uh, the rate of infection among the larvae. So it's a, it's a very incredible mechanism. And so Health Canada, as we mentioned, has given the vaccine conditional approval. So take it, this is promising. What happens next? Well, so far, the vaccine has been tested in the lab and in the field in Europe, but not yet in Canada. So next spring, Health Canada will start allowing some commercial operations to use the vaccine with veterinary supervision. But as BC's chief apiarist told me, there are other considerations beyond the results of those studies. The queen is generally replaced after two years. So the question is, for a beekeeper, is it worthwhile to spend that money uh, to uh, vaccinate a queen uh, that will only serve, uh, pro provide service for two years. So you've got to think about the business as well as the science. The vaccine needs buy-in from the big players, but we can't forget our local beekeepers too. I asked Cormier if she would use the vaccine for her own bees. Absolutely. The research so far is amazing. It's it's not as good as I'd like it to be. It doesn't have a 100% efficacy rate. It's about a 30 to 50% efficacy rate at vaccinating against the disease. However, that's much better than what we've had in the past. So Dan, we'll have to see what results come in over the next year with these new studies. But even for the smaller local operations here in BC, there seems to be quite a buzz. Doris Madavi, science and climate specialist. Thanks very much.